In this episode of the Spring Report, we are covering the new Titleist SM9 wedges. We've got Thomas here to give his insight and do some testing. We'll see what Trackman tells us, and golfers, make sure you skip to the last chapter of the video. For our final thoughts, like the video and subscribe to the channel. Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold of Second Swing Golf, and today I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fitter here at Second Swing at Minnetonka. Today, new wedges uh, for this Swing Report. Titleist SM9, uh, the Bob Vokey wedges. Bob Vokey, of course, one of the most you know renowned golf club designers in the world, working with Titleist and their wedges forever now. And SM9 is here. Uh, always an exciting time because you know we always say in, in fittings or in videos, these are your scoring clubs. The wedges are your scoring club. This is how you you know convert birdies. This is how you save pars uh, with these clubs. So. Uh, wedges are going to be very important. So, Thomas, uh, in the past, what have you noticed from the, I guess, the Vokey SM series, spin build series, and what do you see differently maybe from SM9 here? Yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm glad you said SM series because it's not so much SM8, SM7, right. SM6 wedges. They've all been great. Yeah. They're all so good. Um, let's face it, they're our number one fitted wedge yeah. at, at, at pretty much anywhere. I mean, you watch on, on tour, most golfers are playing mm -hmm. like the, these wedges. Um, they're so easy to fit with. Mm -hmm. You know, you've got the different bounces and grind options. Yeah. Um, so that the nice thing I like about you know, the SM design is, you know, it's just so easy to fit our customers regardless of what their swing type is, whether they have a steep attack angle or they have a shallow attack, attack angle. So whether they're a sweeper or a digger, mm -hmm. um, it's just, they just make life so easy. And yeah. it's always exciting to see what is new coming out. I would probably say, I'm not gonna expect, you know, more ball speed or, no, no, no. or more spin or anything like that. It's, you know, I always think about wedges as you mentioned, they're scoring clubs, they're performance yeah. clubs. You want them to do the same thing every single time. Yeah. So I think kind of along the lines of maybe like a, a car, essentially. You've got your 2020 car and your 2021 model. Yeah. It's not going to go faster. Yeah. Um, it's going to look pretty similar. Yeah. But you've got to bring out something new, right? There's always going to be some innovation going on. And we can talk about the innovation there with, with these wedges, but they look good. They've always looked good. And I think they're going to perform really well. Yeah. And so, you know, we talked about, you know, you mentioned the, the different sole grinds or six different grinds that, you know, are very popular among, you know, it's tour pros, whether it's amateurs, they kind of fit all across the board. So we'll talk about kind of maybe who those are each for, uh, maybe towards the end of the video. But the thing you mentioned about the, the tech innovation is kind of the center of gravity. That's what they've gone for um, in the SM8 anyway. That's what Bob Oak, he did. SM9, he kind of, you know, refined it by moving the center of gravity up a little bit. Yep. Um, so it's almost like it's basically in front of the club face in a way. So um, what that does is it makes it, a ba a, you know, promotes a lower ball flight, lower launch. And with wedges, it might not seem like, you know, at first glance, maybe the, the novice golfer doesn't quite, why would you want it to launch low? But that's how you control the ball. And control is the name of the game when you're hitting wedges to try and get it close to the hole. Right, uh, when you're hitting a wedge, you want that ball to launch low and spin. Mm -hmm. And you think about the grooves, what part of the, of, the, of the face do your golfers hit? And ideally, you want to be between grooves two and five. Yep. So moving that CG, uh, you know, basically, you know, what they've done is, is they've moved it forward or raised it vertically. Um, is it allows to help with regards to hit location with the mm -hmm. wedges, to optimize the launch profile, the spin profiles, and make sure the ball carries the same distance every single yeah. time. It also gives you a better feel too, like right when that center of gravity and the ball are kind of being at the same spot. So yeah, that and then also their their spin milling process has been updated a little bit too. Each groove is spin milled individually and then they've got those micro grooves in between each of the kind of the larger grooves that's in there so you have that, that spin uh that is generated you generate a ton of spin obviously but that feel uh as well is still there with these wedges that's never really been lost so there's i mean again there's a reason the sm5 six seven eight nine are so popular out there for golfers of all skill levels they're they're crafted so beautifully they perform really well and it ultimately they help golfers play better. So uh, today's testing is going to be a little different though, because we obviously are inside. Uh, we'd like to test wedges outside and maybe we'll do that later in the spring when we can get outside, but it's like minus 10 outside here in Minnesota. <laughs> so we'll be inside today. Yeah. We'll do, we'll hit, have Thomas hit a few different shots and maybe work on gapping and things like that. But 
uh, SM9 wedges, always exciting, and they're always going to be really good products. Yeah, I mean, when you're, when you're fitting wedges, you know, we do in fitting a lot of wedges inside here at, at Second Swing. A lot of it is, is conversation based. Yeah. So when we're fitting, we're asking, you know, well, we're even paying attention when they're hitting their clubs, what their attack angle is like. Asking what they want to do with each wedge, whether they like to open and close the club face. Uh, and what their tendencies are, where they need a little bit more forgiveness. Mm -hmm. uh, and that way we can really help dial in the wedges, sure. you know, regardless of where we're seeing them hitting, outside or, or yeah, inside. Yeah. You know, outside testing would be perfect. Yeah. Uh, we'll get to do that when we get the chance to go out in, outside in the spring. Sure. But this is still going to be a good test. You know, we'll talk about gapping a little bit. We'll hit like a 60, 56, 52. Let's make sure obviously they seem like they're gapping nicely. And also we'll compare versus SM8. I'm, as I mentioned, I'm not going to see a, a major difference, but maybe I'll hit a couple of shots with SM8, SM9, yeah. and just talk about the look and the feel and yeah. see if there's anything there. Well, one thing too, SM8 was a great wedge series in its, in its own right, so uh, there's only so much Tyler can do to actually improve on that, but uh, it appears as if they, they've done that. So, uh, Thomas, are you ready to hit some shots here? Let's do it. All right, so Thomas, you have the SM9, you get a 56 degree D grind to start with. You look down at that one, I mean, I probably don't see a huge difference between you know, the look of SM9 and SM8 or, and maybe other wedges, but um, what do you got there? Yeah, so I just grabbed the SM8 just to kind of look down at it and honestly, when I, when I look down on them, they look very, very similar. Mm -hmm. This is hard to see if I can see if anything different. I'm really kind of trying to pay attention. I'd say if anything, it's a little bit rounder, just, just okay. if anything. So the curves just seem a little bit round around the toe and around sure. the, okay. the top there. But no. otherwise, you know, one thing I do notice is if I look at the back side of the club yeah. is you know, we no longer have that white area that's been cut out where it says Volky Design. There's no cut out with the SM9s. Yeah. So maybe that's a little bit to do with moving CG around a little bit and, and everything else yeah. that is too. So there's no cut out anymore looks a lot cleaner from this side for sure. It looks like okay. a, a blade almost from yeah. this side because there's just nothing going on. You can't yeah. rub your finger and see, feel any indentations. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, yeah, they definitely changed that up a little bit. Uh, but, you know, looking at a dress, it doesn't look like a ton of, of difference there. So. Right, yeah, it's, it's really hard to mm -hmm. see really anything. So any changes yeah. made are not really to the appearance at a dress. Right, yeah, let's start out hitting some shots here. Probably hit like my 10:30 swing with each wedge, and we'll take okay. a look at some numbers. So, what distance would this shot go for you? 56 degree? Is that about right? 105? It's about 105. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I'm about a 90 yard with the nine o'clock, and about 105 with my 10:30 swing. Okay. Seems pretty consistent so far. Well, good start. 105.0, 105.5. Yeah. It's going to be a tough ask, but that's, yeah, as I mentioned, uh, I love to hit at 105 with a 1030 swing. Mm -hmm. It's pretty oh, good as well. You're sticking in the 105 range here. <laughs> I know my numbers pretty well. <laughs> well, that's exactly what you're looking for out of the wedge, though. I mean, it's just right. to hit your number, you know? Yeah. Especially on these kind of more. Not full swing, but close to full swing. Yep. A little heavy on that one. Yeah. It's still the pretty good, though. Dropped a yard and a half. The spin retention was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. It dropped like uh, minimally, you know? Yep. It's what? Yeah, so my average was 89.01, and that was 87.63. Yeah. So that's pretty good for a miss hit. So yeah, you want to have that still retention. went that far, even, because that's, you know, we're talking about. You know what, four or five feet short yeah. of that 105 number, you know, carry distance. Yeah, and total distance is about the same. Mm -hmm. 105.0 on that one, average is 105.8. So just a little different bull flight because I got a little bit heavy. Yeah. yeah. Similar there again. That one's dead straight. Yeah, one foot of curve on it. So. Here's our dispersion and numbers here. So we've got five shots. They're all very close to each other up there. Um, but you know, I think it's worth noting how close together all that is. You know, it's very consistent. You got 
you know, 105 is that number you look for, 104.7 is that average carry. Yep. So yeah. good. You know, and, and then what do you think about the feel? You know, is, it, is there anything lost in feel or gained in feel from maybe the, the previous models here? And I, of course, we could probably test SM8 here. We yeah, have. maybe maybe we'll hit SM8 next and see if there's any, any difference. Uh, I, from what I, when I've hit SM8 in the past, I don't, I'm not really noticing at this point anything Anything's, noticeable, but yeah. well, I'm maybe just hit curious that next. to see, you know, if we do notice maybe that ever so slight difference in maybe launch, maybe a little bit lower with the center of gravity, we'll see. Yeah, that's hit SM8. Mm-hmm. Pretty good. It's right on that number. Well, pretty close anyway. That was a little bit heavy on that one. Heavy? Yep. I went about five yards shorter. Mm -hmm. I'm just noticing the spin is still up. Yeah, the, uh, the smash factor Dip number down. dropped just a little bit. Mm -hmm. My club speed was the exact same. I mean, path numbers were great, but. Huh, it's spinning more, funny. So, yeah, I'm noticing that too. It's, it's spinning a little bit more. I think you're actually a little bit lower, slower in club speed too. Uh, compared to the right. SM9, which would you'd think be lower spin. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I was saying a little bit more spin. I think the consistency is a little bit further apart. It's only three yeah. shots in. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the launch angle was basically the same, 29 is what we are at before. Um, but yeah, I'm noticing there. Interesting. A little right? bit difference there in the so spin. It looks like some differences. Maybe not the ones we expected, but yeah. So, SM9 and SM8 with 56 degrees and the D grind here. There's our dispersion circles. A little bit tighter with the SM9. Yep, seeing that. And uh, the, the big difference to me is the spin right here. Right, um, I, I'm I, a little surprised to see the SM8, you know, all of a sudden spinning, you know, 500 RPMs more. Yeah. Uh, my club speed was the exact, exact same. Uh, I think we we're, what, about 77 yep. miles yep. an hour. Uh, launch angle both 29 degrees, mm -hmm. but yeah, we're, we're seeing that just that little bit difference here in that, in that spin. Yeah. You know, my attack angle was a little bit steeper, I guess, with the SM8, oh, so sure. that could be the, the, the difference overall. Um, <laughs> but yeah, pretty, pretty similar dynamic loft, the same, so we know the loft on the clubs yeah. the, the exact same. But yeah, it's, it's pretty good, both yeah. SM8 and SM9. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think, you know, it's, it's always nice to see that circle get a little smaller too. Yep. So and the consistency. So I'm mm -hmm. looking at those plus or minus numbers, like this on the spin with the SM9. Yeah. Plus or minus 154 versus plus or minus 185. Mm -hmm. It's subtle, but it's maybe just a little tighter tolerance there overall. Yeah. Yeah. And that's one thing that they said too is, and even in constructing the club with the grooves, you know, their their tolerance just got a little tighter. Uh, so maybe that's showing itself in the consistency here of the spin, but. I couldn't notice a real difference in feel between them. Right. And look, they're And I wouldn't they're think, I wouldn't anticipate a huge difference in the feel. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, and as we kind of do the rest of this now, the next part is going to be trying to, for you and your gapping. So, you know, we're going to hit 60 degrees and 52 degrees. Um, and first of all, tell us the grinds you're going to hit and then also like the yardages you would expect there. Yeah, this changed the grinds up a little bit. I'll hit the 60 M grind. And then yeah. the, the 52, it only comes in one grind, so it'll be 52 F grind. Okay. Yeah. Well, I like that. Yeah. Right off the bat, that's, the, that's my number, so 120. 120 is that yep. carry number. There yep. you go. I'm separated about 15 yards between yep. the two okay. of them. Yep. There you go. 122. Just a little further. It's a little bit lower on spin that time. Maybe kind of forced it to fly a couple yards further, but. Yep. There you go again.
There you go. One twenty point zero over for God's test. That's, <laughs> that's funny. That's, that's how pretty that works good. <laughs> yeah. So we've got your fifty-two degree SM nine F grind. So explain. So the F grind is—is is it the only one? The only grind offered at fifty-two degree? Yeah. So F grind is available all the way up to fifty-six. So from forty-six okay. to fifty-six, and we'll talk about in the in the what who's it for about yeah. these balance grinds, but. F grind's square face design. Yeah. I know that's the one that's designed yeah. for the, the full swings. You right. Know. You're not opening and closing the club face with right. this one. Right. Yeah. And most golfers are using a 52 degree wedge for kind of just attacking the flag on a more full swing. Uh, but I think it's, it's encouraging for you, obviously, to know, hey, 120.0, that, that is what you said <laughs> for your yardage on this shot. Yeah. And you carried it exactly that far. And also these, you know, their circles are not very far away either. So. That's uh, promising there. Any other numbers that you want to look at here, Thomas? And I, one thing that jumps out to me is how consistent the spin was. On that's pretty good. Considering the ball was going further, that, mm -hmm. cons that spin's consistency at plus or minus 78, it's, yep. it's really hard to, hard to beat. But yeah, right. because there's less loft, mm -hmm. um, you know, notice the ball's spinning a little bit less and you're seeing a little bit more ball speed overall. But yeah, that, that launch angle still lower, which is, which is good. So mm -hmm. low launch um, to keep that thing nicely <laughs> flighted coming through the... Yep through the sky. Again, that is one of those things that, you know, they were working on is, you know, it's, it's, it's almost the opposite of a driver, you know, with the driver, you're looking for that high launch, low spin combination. And with a wedge, it's almost different. Like you want yeah, that low launch and, and a lot of spin to yep. be able to control the ball. A well, bit. you don't want to have like so much, no, you don't have so much spin that the ball is spinning backwards on the, on the right, green. Right, right, right. So when I'm hitting a 1030, the reason I hit a 1030 swing as opposed to a full swing with a wedge, that's pretty much my full swing. Because, yeah, you don't want a 12 o'clock swing with a wedge because then you're going to just, it's going to go it's sky gonna go high with a bunch of spin and the wind can do anything to it. Right. Uh, so that's, t your full swing with a wedge is a 10-30 swing and yeah. that's kind of a good pointer for golfers to, to, you know, take note of and maybe implement in their games. But I, yeah, that spin consistency out of this wedge, I think that's really impressive for a 52 degree wedge hitting at 120 yards, but having the spin be that close to each other every shot. Yeah, it, it feels really good, um, looks really good at a dress. You know, they've always looked and felt really yeah. good at a dress, and it's, uh, it's no different with SM9s versus mm -hmm. SM8s. Well, let's try the 60 degree here and see if we can get the same, you know, consistency from that one as well. Yep, so 60 for me, 1030 swing is 90 yards. 90 yards, okay, yep. how about the grind here? What are we going with that? Uh, so we'll change up the grind a little bit just so we've got a couple, a different option here and mm -hmm. we'll go with the M grind. Okay, M grind. M grind is you know, eight degrees of bounce on it. It's, you know, heel and toe relief. So okay. toe side, heel side, you'll notice how it's kind of ground a little yep. bit around. A little more camber there. Yep. It allows you to open and close the club face a little bit easier. Okay. So your higher loft of wedges, you know, around the green, this is something you can rely a lot on. Sure. Ball came back on you a little bit there with that one. Barely. Yeah, a little bit more spin there. Which point, happens. Yeah, point one yard. So that's what I talk about with regards to stopping on a dime. Yeah. You don't want it to, there you go. once it hits the ground, just not Yeah, do you it don't anything. want it ripping back on you. Yeah. Interesting. It's been climbed over 10,000 that time. Yeah. Loft's doing its job. That's why I wouldn't swing this thing anything more right, than anything 1030. Than you get up to you know 11,000 spin, for example, that's when things can get really crazy. Pretty consistent, actually. Yeah, and this is the uh, the part of the game that goes for me is inside that hundred yards because I just don't practice it enough yeah. this time of the year. So yeah, when you, you know, really can't. I mean, you can hit shots in uh, you know a, a simulator bay, but it's nothing right. like the feel and you know seeing the depth of how far you have on a golf course. Right outside, and this is the most important part of your game to dial in when you're coming out of that winter months, especially with Minnesotans. Yep. Get your wages, your wage numbers. Well, especially right for away. you too, because you know the way you know your con the way you compete and stuff. Making birdies is what you need to do to to you know right. be successful. Yeah. Saving par isn't going to do you a ton. <laughs> good, really. So. Yeah. So sixty degree time. Um, 
the average carry 91.1. So you're within a yard of your number there. Yeah, you're really with, you're within a yard of your number on all of them. You're actually on the number with the 52 degree. So yeah, but that's four feet further away from the hole than I would like. Well, I know that. <laughs> uh, but your takeaway on 60 degree, anything new that you learned? You know, I, I think it's interesting that you're, uh, you know, so the the jump from and spin, right? So from 52 degree to 56 here, you went, you know, what six or 700 RPM. And then you went another basically a thousand to yep. the next club. Is that expected? Yeah, that that's what I would okay. expect. It probably seven hundred to a thousand, depending on on the club. We got a four degree difference between each okay. club there. You see that kind of with with irons as well, from six iron, seven iron, eight iron, nine iron. As you have more loft on a club, you're going to see more spin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that kind of increment is basically more or less the the same there as you go up. Um, and then you know we can talk a little bit on. Um, I, mean, I, I would just want to look at the consistency numbers really for everything uh, and how small they all are because really the SM9, uh, 56 degree degrind, you know, that's probably the best consistency for all of them overall. But yep. I mean, in general, this club or these clubs, I guess, are doing what you want them to do. I mean, you look at the map here where this is very zoomed in actually for those who don't know. I mean, that's, we're talking, this is, this whole scale here is five yards and these 60 degree shots are no more than a basically a yard or two away from the center so yeah you get rid of that that yellow circle you can see sm9 you're yeah. basically separated there by 50 i mean even the yellow circle is about the same yardage but um you can see 15 yard apart with yeah. regards to numbers everyone's going to be different with regards to those yardages for me it's 15 yards is my is my gapping yeah, yep. yeah. So I mean, clearly sm9 delivers and, and allows you know a golfer if they're going to go get a set of wedges the gapping is going to be there the consistency is going to be there and it's going to perform the way that the golfer needs and then it's ultimately up to then you know the golfer to deliver the swing i guess right and then it comes down to the fitter finger figuring out right. and talking to the customer about what grinds and bounces that everyone should play yeah well let's let's dive into that right now all right so tom is testing complete Voki sm9 wedges and you know, you know, usually for these swing reports, we kind of go through the who's it for section and, you know, maybe the different models or, or what have you, we'll try to categorize them. But wedges is a little bit different, especially with Bokeh, because it's all about, you know, with the fitting, it's all about the, the grinds. Yep. And six grinds is the big, kind of a huge win for Bokeh and the wedges. Uh, so in the six different uh, grinds, let's kind of go through them and we'll explain the who's it for on each of those. So let's start with, we talked a little bit about the F grind, uh, but talk to me a little bit about who would be fit in for you know an F grind and what the purpose of that grind is? Yeah, so F grind, it's it's a full full sole grind essentially. It's for our players that deliver the face square at impact. Mm -hmm. um, as I, as I mentioned earlier, you're gonna you're gonna get that wedge in a 46, 48, 50, 52, 54, and a 56. So okay. speaking of say the 56, it's for the golfer that you know sand wedge that doesn't really manipulate the face too much. Probably just plays that face really square around the green. The clubs that have you know less loft on them, they're going to be F grinds just because they're trying to fill that yeah. gap nicely. Yeah, and that's yeah. just a full, more or less a full swing club at that point. Right, wow. yeah. You're not trying to open and close the club face with a yeah. 48 or a 50 or right. something like that. Uh, okay, let's move on to, let's try the M grind now, the yep. M grind. So, uh, you know, talk to me about that one, the advantages and disadvantages, I guess, of that one. Yeah, so M grind you're going to find in sand wedge and lob wedge options. Um, so generally it's about eight degrees of bounce on that. Okay. So it's, you know, the M grind and the D grind, they kind of both have that heel and toe relief on them. The M grind is the lower bounce option of them. Okay. So it's going to be for the golfer that around the green is looking for versatility, looking for the op ability to open and close the club face. So if you like to hit flop shots, if you like yeah. to hit a, a shot where you're kind of chasing the ball up the, up the green, mm -hmm. it gives you that option by having the, the, the grind, the heel and toe relief on that particular wedge. It's going to be for a golfer that is more of a picker than a digger. Okay, interesting. And then you mentioned you had mentioned the D grind there as kind of, you know, it has maybe a similar shaping to it, but more bounce. So, so maybe that's just for someone that um, is kind of a little bit steeper. Yeah, it's, it's kind of all the above that I just said for the M grind, except if you have a steeper attack angle. 
or if say you're playing on softer turf conditions, say okay. the say the bunker possibly is in that soft white sand as yeah. opposed to not much sand or firm sand in, in, the, in the bunker. Okay. And that's also found 54 through to 60, so in okay. your sand wedge and low wedge options. Okay. So those last two are kind of really for players maybe do like to be creative a little bit. Right. Um, so now that's uh, that S grind. Uh, that's yep. a little bit of a different one too. Yeah. Um, S S grind, it's uh, it's a little bit narrower. Mm -hmm. uh, so looking at the looking at the at the sole here, it's got a little bit of a, a narrower sole with a little bit of a, a kind of an edge on on the back of it. Yeah. So it's for a golfer, you know, that does like to manipulate it a little bit. Still probably in that, I guess, moderate with regards to attack angle. So okay. not a steep attack angle, but not a super your shallow attack angle either. You know, kind of right in the middle. But it's for the golfer that maybe leads with their hands. Mm -hmm. So their hands might be forward at impact, or their hands oh, might be sure. back at, at impact. Um, thinking about golfers that, you know, kind of use this maybe like Jordan Spieth or around the green. You're not really trying to really open, you can not open it, but You can almost, you almost kind of use your wrist a little bit when you're trying to manipulate your swing to right. deliver the club versus maybe opening the face and stuff, which you can yep. still do with that, but. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's a, it's a unique, unique wedge, and I think, you know, Steve Stricker, I always think of him like, you know, Escarine, Steve Stricker. That's kind of yeah. how I always kind of think of that. Mm -hmm. Or John Spieth, did I get the there S's? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So now the last two, the K and L are kind of unique because right. I, I imagine you don't fit a lot of players into either one of these. <laughs> uh, so let's start well, with the K grind here. In Minnesota, probably more the K grind than the L grind. A little more the soft turf sometimes. Um, bounce is your friend. Yeah. So with this wedge, you do get a lot of bounce. Yes. Um, it's got yes. quite the sole on it. Mm -hmm. So this is for the very steep atta attack angle golfer. I think white soft sand with this. When yeah. I'm thinking, it's it's the ultimate. I think Titus called it like the ultimate wedge sand wedge flip club. Yep. So because I mean, you can see how wide that sole is. You know, that's just gonna plop into the sand and you know create that energy needed to get the ball out. So. Yep. You can see why this would be such an advantage uh, to use in sand, and then moving into the L grind, you get basically the opposite look, where you know they see this that sole is very thin, and then that that kind of camber and, and that that relief has really provided trailing edge, heel, and toe there too. Yeah, and this is a wedge that you know, I don't fit a lot of people into. Yeah. Um, you, I think you've got to be a very good wedge player to play the the L grind. It's got four degrees of bounce on it versus the K grind, which has fourteen degrees. Yeah. So it's got a lot less bounce on it, but you know, speaking of turf conditions, you know, it's for the player that's playing in very, very firm conditions. Yep. I think of like the tour players when they go down to say Texas during the, during the Texas sweep. That's when they'll, they'll see players start using the, the sure. L grind, mm -hmm. and you know, the wet, the PGA Tour players they'll change up their grinds depending on the turf conditions they're playing. Right. If they're playing on Bermuda, if they're playing or on the grass in Hawaii, or they're playing you know, grass down in, um, down in Texas, or they're right. playing uh, on bank grass, it's gonna be a different turf interaction for them. Yeah, so that's the benefit they have, of course, when they have to go all the way around the world, essentially. They have to uh, identify and make sure their wedges are you know, the right fit for that turf. You know, most golfers that you know, are getting fit, a lot of times are staying in one area, so that yep. stays pretty consistent, but. Yeah, I think with a wedge fitting, it's important to have versatility, especially if you play you know, different golf courses. Mm -hmm. If you're not a member and you just play just one course, it's nice to have different bounce and grind yes. options in your bag. So maybe you have a, an S grind and a D grind and an F grind kind of thing, as yep. opposed to just going MMM or FFF. Right. It's nice to have some versatility in your, in your bag and some change up on the bounce. Because who knows when you're the next day you're gonna go play a different golf course that has different sand conditions yep. and all of a sudden you're you're stuck with the, the same way. But obviously we we don't want to have to go and buy five different 60 degree wedges, but you know it's nice to have just a little bit of versatility in, in your bag. Yep. Yeah, I know that's a big thing that we, we preach here is you know the having different bounces in the bag is probably the optimal way to go. Uh, but I think you know clearly SM9 is gonna be a winner. It always is a winner. Uh, the the SM series from Voki and Titleist. Really, you know, I think we noticed some, you know, a tire dispersion in our very kind of simple test there at the beginning, SM8 to SM9. But consistency is delivered, and uh, you know, from you know all the metrics, we saw that deviation be really tight. So uh, they've done a great job of providing control and uh, you know the right spin numbers, at least for your game. So you would imagine that translates to a lot of other golfers out there. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I'll finish up here with regards to the wedges and who's it for. Um, you think about like a wedge with the set or wedge without the set. So I want to add that in, that little piece in here too. If you play 
wedges, if you like to chip with your gap wedge, you like to chip with your sand wedge, mm -hmm. pitching wedge even as well there, you want to go with a little more versatile wedge like the Volke SM9 wedge. If you really, maybe you're not as skilled with the wedges, mm -hmm. that's when you're going to maybe stick with the wedges in the set yeah. overall. So that's kind of the last thing I would kind of add in there too is yeah. just because there's a 46 degree uh, SM9 wedge that you know, looks good and feels great, doesn't mean that you should be playing it if you maybe stick with the wedge for the set. Sure. The advantage is with a, uh, a more versatile wedge is you're not going to get flyers. So it's not going to be prone to flyers as much, which is the nice thing with yeah. the SM9 versus wedge with the set. Sure, sure. Well, and, and in this test, you know, the numbers well, that you were looking for, they hit pretty well. I mean, it was within one yard on all of them. So uh, golfers, if you're interested in a wedge fitting for the new SM9 wedges, you know where to go. Uh, it's talk with a master fitter, whether it's at our store or online through a virtual fitting. And one of our experts get you set up. You'll be able to take some wedges, whether it's maybe you get a whole set, maybe you get one in your bag. Whatever you need for your game, we'll get you set up. And then uh, you can also take advantage of our 30 day play guarantee as well. Get those wedges or wedge in your bag, try it out for 30 days. And uh, if it maybe doesn't work for your game, maybe you need an extra fit, whatever the case might be, we'll get that set up for you as well. So. Thomas, thanks for joining, providing your insight. Again, SM9 always going to be a great option. And once again, in 2022, uh, great wedges here. Great wedges, tight. This is going to do really well with the SM9s.